Hello everybody, welcome to game five of the 1969 Inside Pitch Fall Classic replay. Baltimore Orioles, San Francisco Giants. And we are at game five where San Francisco leads three games to one. So the Orioles, it's either win or the series is over. If they do win, then game six will be back in Baltimore. It'll be Jim Palmer against Gaylord Perry if we get to that. But here in game five, it's a battle of left-handers. Mike McCormick for the Giants and Dave McNally for the Orioles. And we'll look at the starting lineups for both teams. We bring the score sheet into play. We have Buford in left, Blair in center, Frank Robinson in right, Boog Powell at first, Brooks Robinson at third, Davey Johnson at second, Etcheberry in catching, Belanger at short, and McNally pitching. For the Giants, Fuentes at third, Hunt at second, Bonds in right, McCovey at first, Mays in center, Jimmy Ray Hart in left, Dick Dietz catching, Lanier at short, and McCormick on the mound. On the 69th season, McCormick was 11-9 with a 3-3-4 ERA, but he did pitch pretty well in game two of the series, which the Giants took from the Orioles. So this is a pitching matchup from game two. Check the... Looks like everything's pretty good to go as far as being in place. And we are ready to go. McCormick finishing up those warm-up tosses. Don Buford in the batter's box and Earl Weaver already with his supply of Chesterfields as he is on the clock here as far as being on elimination game. They have to win to keep it to game, to send it to game six. McNally. And McCormick. So McCormick facing Buford. 4-1. That's a walk chance. Against a lefty, he walks at a 12. The stadium answer gives him a 15. So that will be a leadoff walk to Buford. And we'll see if the Orioles can get a jump, try to steal, get something going here. Four and a minus one is a three. But they can't get the jump, so they'll stay put. Here's Paul Blair. 3-4. And that's a walk plus. He walks at a 6 against the lefty, 16 with the plus. Plus 3 there is an, makes it a 19, so that 18 will be a walk. Back-to-back -back walks as the umpire tightening the strike zone on McCormick a little bit, kind of squeezing him. Earl is uh, not going to complain about it whatsoever. First and second, nobody out. Here is the strategy roll, nothing happening. So here's Frank Robinson, chance for the Orioles to jump out to an early lead. McCormick, 1-6 against a right-hander. That's a blank. Frank Robinson, 5-5. Five, five. That's a fly to center. Out number one. Now, Buford runs at a 4. To go from second to third on a fly to center, you lose one. I'm sorry, you lose three. So that drops him to a 1. And uh, Mays is a 0. So 1, he can make it. 2 through 5, he holds. And a 6-6, six, six, he's out. So he's got a hold. So he cannot make it. He will stay at second base with one out. For the left-hander, Boo Powell. Lefty on lefty matchup. Nothing on the strategy roll. McCormick to Powell. 4-2 is possible error on a ground ball. Powell, 6-2. Grounder to short. Possible error. That is a 2. That is a 2. So Lanier will boot it. An error on Lanier, and that's going to load the bases. Could have been a double play grounder to end the inning, but instead, that boot will load the bases. Bases are loaded with only one out for Brooks Robinson and McCormick. Kind of shaking his head. Lanier thinks maybe it hit a rock or something in there, and it jumped on him a little bit, but uh, he had been trying to Turn that double play too fast. Base is loaded, one out. Infield is at regular double play depth. They're not going to play in. They're going to play back for the double play. Brooks Roberts is a good candidate for that. He's a three plus the one there plus halfway would make him a five. So most likely would be a double play if it's a ground ball. McCormick, two one is a range play. Well, that will take one of the uh, ranges away from the infielders by being halfway. Brooks Robinson, 4-3, ground ball to third. So the range of Fuentes is a three, but since they're halfway, he's only a two. One to two to get to this. He cannot. It might 
go for extra bases. And it does. It's a double down the line for Brooks Robinson. How do you like that? A double down the line by Brooks Robinson will score Buford and Blair for sure. Powell we're not so sure about. He doesn't run very well. Boog Powell runs at a two. There are two outs. I'm sorry, there's only one out, so they're not going to get the boost there. He's a two. Left fielder arm is a plus one. Gives him a three to score from second on a double to left. To score from first, rather, on a double to left. You lose one. Drops him down to a two again. One to two, he can make it. To five, he's got a hold. So he will hold at third base, but a big double from Brooks Robinson gives the Orioles a 2-0 lead here in the top of the first. Infield for the Giants is going to have to come in. Here's Davey Johnson. Strategy roll and nothing's happening. 6-5 is blank. We go to Johnson's card. 6-4. He's going to single to left field. That will score. Boot Powell for sure. We don't know about Brooks. We know Powell's going to score. Brooks Robinson runs at a three. Single to left. You add one. That makes him a four. Jimmy Ray Hart's a one. Makes him a five. One to five. Anything other than a six, he will score. And he does. So Brooks Robinson scores. It's four nothing Baltimore here in the top of the first. How do you like that? No attempt for Davy Johnson. We'll try the strategy roll. Nothing happening. McCormick may need quick relief here. 4-4. Four, four, strikeout chance. 13 is going to be too high. Go to Echebaron. 6-1. That's a single pass or out the center. So, boy, McCormick is having a rough day of it. Single to center. You get from first to third. You lose one. So, Johnson is a 3. Drops him to a 2. Still only one out. So, 1-2. And he can make it to third base. And he does. So how about that? When things are going right for the Orioles, they're going right for the Orioles. And the guy who's really happy about this is Mr. Earl Weaver. Now, the question is, how long do you go with McCormick? Really struggling. Runners are at the corners. They're going to play the infield halfway for the traditional double play if they can get it. 6-1 is a blank. We go to Belanger. 1-4. Fly to center, that could be a sacrifice fly. Uh, Johnson runs at a three. But first of all, the sacrifice fly chance for Belanger is a two. And it passes that so we don't have to go to the other check. It's just a sacrifice fly to center field. And it is five nothing Orioles here in the top of the first. Five to nothing. Here's the pitcher McNally. He's gonna hit before he gets a chance to pitch. 2-1 is a range play. McNally, 2-1 again. He flies to left. The range of the left fielder heart is a 2. And he can't get it. Is it going to be a double? No, it's a single to left field. And they're going to bat around here in the first inning. Echebarian's going to just hold up. They're not going to try to send him to third. But they're going to bat around. Buford will come around and bat again. So i got to update the score sheet here and get everybody batted around. And bullpen for the Giants, Ron Bryant, another left-hander, is loosening in the bullpen and would be coming in. I think he's the long relief guy. Let me check and see if he's the long relief guy or whether it's somebody else. Bowling can go eight batters. Bryant can go seven batters. So they're pretty much tit for tat. So Ron Bryant is loosening in the pen, but they're going to try to get McCormick through this inning if possible. There are two outs. No strat. Well, we'll roll for pickoff. Nothing happening. So here's Buford. 6 2 range play at Candlestick. 4 3. That's a ground ball to first. Check of the range of McCovey. He's only a two. This could get by McCovey. And it does. Is it going to be a double? It will. It's a double by Buford. Double by Buford, that will score Echebaron. It is now six to nothing Orioles. McNally runs at a one. I'm sorry, runs at a two. There are two outs, makes him a three. And to score on a double to right, you lose one, makes him a two. And so he will stay put at third base. 
And that's going to be it for McCormick. He's not even going to get out of the first inning. He's going to go two-thirds of an inning and give up at least six runs. And the runners on base are his responsibility. <clears throat> in fact, it will not be Brian. It will be the aforementioned Bobby Bolin who comes in to pitch. So Bobby Bolin is on. He can face eight batters. And they're going to need some long relief here, although they do get a day off for travel. Assuming it looks like it's going back to Baltimore for game six. They do get a day off for travel, so that will help them a little bit. So they can really you know, pretty much use everybody in their bullpen without any issues. Here's Bolin to Blair. No strategy roll. 3-3, three, three, strikeout chance, and he got him. Innings over, finally. Six runs in the top of the first for the Orioles. They have given McNally carte blanche <laughs> to do what he wants now with a 6-0 lead. I think Earl Weaver might be putting him on autopilot. We'll see. McNally to Fuentes. 6-2 is a strikeout chance. 12 is too much. Go to Fuentes. 6-2. He's got a single. So Giants said, wait a minute. We haven't even had a chance to bat yet. Why are you writing us off? No strategy rolling down 6 to nothing. We're not going to mess with that. Uh, as far as trying to steal, will be a pickoff chance, though. Nothing. And there's a 20, so let's see if he gets picked off. One is a balk, two to four is a pickoff. Nope, no pickoff. He got back. McNally, 6-6 six, six is a walk chance, but 20 is too much. Go to Hunt. 5-3. He doubles to left, so look at this. They are in runner safe because they're down six to nothing. You don't want to take any chances. So second and third, nobody out, and all of a sudden now the Giants have a chance to score. Had these pitching duels, and all of a sudden now everybody wants to hit. McNally, make sure there's no balk. There's not. Pitch to Bonds, infield obviously laying back. They want an out. 4-2, that's the ballpark card. We're going to Candlestick for Bobby Bonds. 1-6, that's a blank, so we're going to the rare play chart. Rare play chart, runners at second and third, and nobody out. I don't think I've ever been to that particular section of this replay chart. Second and third, nobody out. The roll is an eight. So second and third, nobody out. And the roll is an eight. And with nobody out, line out to third base, poor throw to second. Batter's soft line drive is caught by the third baseman who fires the ball high to second base. Roll against third baseman's error rating. If the roll is higher, his throw is over the second baseman's head. All right, so the error rating of, actually means if it's lower because they have a different rule interpretation. So basically five or less, it'll be a throwing error on Brooks Robinson, six or more, no error. And there's no error on the play. So it's just a liner to third. Let me make sure there's no other ramifications here. If roll is not higher, second base will knock the ball down and keep the runner from advancing. Okay. So there you go. So we try to double the runner off second base, but uh, throws a little bit off the mark, but Davey Johnson kept it in front of him, and it's just one out. Here's McCovey against McNally. 1-4. That's a blank. We go to McCovey. 1-6. He's going to single to center. Let's see if there's a chance. No, Blair's a minus two, so there's no automatic score from second. So since they're playing runner safe, Hunt will stop at third base. Fuentes scores, cuts the lead to 6-1. to one. And, you know, like I said, the Giants say, hey, we need a chance to bat. We might be able to score six runs. You never know. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Here's Willie Mays. 1-4, blank. We go to Willie Mays. 5-1, ground ball to short. Could be a double play. He's a 3. Plus 1 is a 4. Plus 1 for being halfway makes him a 5. And the pivot is a 1 is a 6. So it's an automatic double play. 6-4-3, and that kind of kills the rally right there. So the Giants get 1, but that was it. They could have had more. They only get 1. And at the end of 1 inning, it is 6-1 to one in favor of the Orioles. See if the pitching can finally get control of this game. Here's Bowling to Frank Robinson. 5-3. That's a strikeout plus chance. But that won't help, and that 20 is going to be too high. 
Right. Robinson gets the swing. 3-2. He flies to center. One down for Boog Powell. 1-5. Against the lefty, that's a walk chance. 9 will be a walk. So Boog Powell will draw the base on balls. No strategy roll needed. Here's Brooks Robinson. 6-2. Strikeout chance. And he got him. Right on the number. 5. So 2 down for Dave Johnson. 1-5 is a strikeout chance this time, and he got him. So that's going to end the inning. So Bolin is going to end up going an inning and a third in relief. But he's set to be pinch hit for here probably because this spot comes up fourth. So most likely he will be lifted for a pinch hitter. All right. McNally facing Jimmy Ray Hart. 5-4. That's a strikeout chance, and he got him. One down. Hart is retired. Here's Dick Dietz. 6-6. Six, six, walk chance, and he walks Dick Dietz to bring up Lanier. Again, no uh, steal attempt. We'll do a balk or something. Nothing happening there. McNally, 5-1. Blank. We go to Hal Lanier. 1-3, ground ball to first. This could be a double play. He's a 2, plus the 1 is a 3. They're halfway, makes it a 4. The pivot to 1 makes it a 5. Anything other than a 6, it's a double play. And it's a double play, 3-6-3. Three, three. It's nice when you have those infielders with the plus 1 pivots. They help the double plays big time. So we go to the 3rd. And as it turns out, Bolin will come out and pitch the top of the third now because he's set to lead off the next inning. He can face eight batters. He's faced five, so he should be okay. He might be a little tired near the end, but we'll see. Etchebarren, 3-5 is a straight-up home run chance. Etchebarren's an 11. That's a three. It's gone. Andy Etchebarren, home run. He's only in there because of the lefty starter. Usually, Ellie Hendricks is in there, but... With the lefty that started the game, they platoon and go with Etchebarren, and he hits a home run. It's 7 to 1 Orioles. Belanger, 5 1 is a blank. We go to Belanger. 3 1, and he's going to single. So they're just trying to get Bowling through this, but they may have troubles. McNally is your batter, and he is set to bunt. So let's see what kind of bunt we can get. He's a 3, he becomes a 2. Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to roll for the strikeout chance first. My bad. 5-2 is a walk chance. And I believe he's going to walk. And I think when you try to bunt, you still play for the walk. Let's see here. On a bunt. I know you can chance for strikeouts. I'm pretty sure you do the same thing for walks. But let me double check it. Make sure I'm accurate. Let's see here. Resolve the pitch using pitcher card, including hit by pitch and wild pitches. Now, walks are not listed. Walks are not listed on here. So, I guess the theory is if he's trying to bunt, he's not going to wait out a walk. So, there will not be a walk. He will go ahead and do the sacrifice bunt. He becomes a two. And it's a seven. Seven says it's a good bunt, and the two is to the pitcher. So, it's a good sacrifice for McNally. Call it one to four. As yeah, that moves Belanger to second base. One out. Here's Buford. Bolin, this will be batter number eight. I'm sorry, this he's already faced batter. This is batter nine. He is tired. One one strikeout chance, but 12 is too much. Buford, 2-2. Two, two, ground ball to short. Let's see if the runner can advance. You have to have. He has his BR has to beat the die roll. His BR is a 4. We need a 3 or less to advance. And he cannot. So he stays put. 2 down for Paul Blair. And again, Bolin is tired. He's just trying to get through the inning. 3-3. Three, three, strikeout chance and he got him. And they will finish he will finish out the inning going 2 and a third. So Bolin gives up the home run to Echebarren. But other than that he pitched very well. It's 7-1 to one Orioles as we go to the bottom of the third. And first batter up for the Giants will be a pinch hitter for Bolin. And the new pitcher for the Giants, I do believe, in the next inning 
will be Ron Herbel. So Herbel will be the new pitcher that comes in. But the pinch hitter for the Giants, they need a right-hander or hope to get a right-hander out there. And it's going to be Bobby Etheridge. So Etheridge, the right-hander, will pinch hit for the pitcher, Bolin. Etheridge will lead it off. Here in the bottom of the third, trailing 7-1. to one. 3-6 is a walk chance. 16 is a walk because he walks at a 13 plus a 3, so it will be a walk. Almost missed it. So Etheridge draws a leadoff walk. No pickoff. Here's Fuentes. 6-2 strikeout chance against a lefty, though, is not going to do it. Too high. Fuentes, 2-5, and against the lefty, he's going to double to left field. And again, runner safe mode, so... Etheridge will stop at third base. So runners are at second and third. Second and third for Ron Hunt. And nobody out. Infield, of course, is back. That's a 20 chance for a balk here. Nope, nothing, nothing happened there. No balk. Right now Alley to Hunt. 4-2. That's the ballpark card. A candlestick, 5-6, and that's a blank again. So a, a rare play once again with, once again, runners at second and third. Same base situation we had earlier on the rare play. And roll a 12 this time. So on a 12, rare play with second and third and nobody out, and we're at a 12. Deep drive to the left field wall. Outfielder races back to the wall and leaps to try to haul in a long drive. Roll one die against the outfielder's defensive rating i.e., in this case, range rating for us. If the die is lower than his range rating, he makes an outstanding leaping catch to save a home run. Runners tag up and advance one base. If the die is equal to the outfielder's range, the ball deflects off his glove and bounces away. Runners score and batter winds up a third with a triple. If the die is higher than the range, it clears it for a home run. Options, subtract one from Fizzler's defensive rating Okay, we'll do that because he's unfamiliar with the ballpark. So we're going to drop Buford from a four to a three. And then we're going to roll the die. If it's a one or two, he makes a great catch. Runner's tag. If it's a three, it'll be a triple that clears the bases. Four or more, it's a home run. It's gone. Ron Hunt. A three-run home run for Ron Hunt as... Buford was just unable to get to it. It's a three-run home run, and just like that, the Giants are back in the game. A big three-run homer, and all of a sudden, it's 7-4. to four. And everything is right back in line. Earl Weaver just pulled out his Chesterfield, almost choked, trying to get it out, realizing now that it won't be a cakewalk he thought it was going to be. Here's Bonds. 2-5, strikeout chance, and he got him. That's out number one. But now strategy rolls are back into place. 6-6 six, six is a potential walk. 14 will be a walk to McCovey. That's how this whole thing started. was a walk to the pinch hitter. He walks McCovey. Roll for strategy. Nothing happening. Here's Willie Mays. Now he's 6-3. That's a straight-up home run chance. Mays is a 9. That's a 6. It's gone. A two-run home run for Willie Mays. And just like that, it's a 7-6 to six ball game. Unbelievable. It is 7-6, to six, and now McNally's going to need some relief. As he is getting fatigued now and getting beat around the bush. Jimmy Ray Hart, 1-2 is a strikeout chance. 16 is too much. Go to Hart. 4-1. He's going to single. And they may not be able to go much longer with McNally because they are down to... The nitty-gritty are you the Orioles, so let's see how they want to play this. They are going to go to Dave Leonard out of the pen. So Dave Leonard is going to come in. So McNally, given a 7-1 to lead or 6 nothing lead before he even starts the game and cannot hold it. Unbelievable. Should have been a cakewalk, but Giants had other ideas. So Leonard is on now, the right-hander, 
And let's see, for McNally, he's only going to go, he's only going to go two and two-thirds innings. Or I'm sorry, two and a third. It's only one out, so it's two and a third. And he's going to give up six runs, and the seventh run is his responsibility. So Dick Dietz is up. Leonard will roll the strategy for a pickoff. That's a two. I don't think Hart has any kind of chance. No, he doesn't have a chance to steal. So there's no pickoff. Here's Leonard to Dietz. 5-1. It's a strikeout chance, but that's too much. It's only 11. That's a 12. Go to Dietz. 6-5. And against a right-hander, that's a fly to left for out number two. And here's Hal Lanier, ninth man to bat in the inning. Nothing on the strategy roll. Here's Leonard to Lanier. 1-6. Strikeout chance. And he got him. So the inning's over, but not before five runs score. And it's seven to six after three innings of a play. Unbelievable. Now Herbal is the new pitcher coming in. But he would be leading off the next inning, so they may want to try a double switch here. And I think they will. They're going to bring in a new. They might bring in a new catcher. Let's see here. They are going to bring in. Jack Hyatt is the new catcher. So Jack Hyatt is going to bat ninth in catch. Jack Hyatt, he's a much better defensive catcher. And then batting ninth is going to be the pitcher, Herbal. Or batting eighth. I'm sorry, not ninth. I got it backwards. He's batting seventh. Let's put him in the eighth spot for some strange reason. So let's... Clean that up. Lanier's not going anywhere. It's way too good of a defender to take him out. So Herbal is going to come in and pitch and bat in the seventh spot. Hyatt's going to catch, and he will bat in the ninth position. So I need to get my lineups straight. So that means that coming out of the game, is Dick Dietz. He will leave. Ron Herbal comes in to pitch. Hyatt will lead off the inning now. And I think we're ready to go at this point. Frank Robinson will be leading it off. All of a sudden, it's a 7-6 to six game. Frantic. I did not expect this. Usually a 69 season has been more for pitching, but this game is just... Incredible to have 13 runs already in three innings. And one team batted around, sending 11 to the plate. One team sent nine to the plate, which some people call batting around, depending on how you want to look at it. But either way, it's it's a lot of stuff going on. Herbal to Frank Robinson. Start the fourth. 6-4 is a blank. We go to Frank Robinson. 1-3 is in a ground to short. One down. Brings up Boog Powell. 3-4, that's a strikeout chance. Six got him, two down. So neither starter had it in this one. So it's a battle of the pens now. 4-5 for Herbal is a blank. We go to Robinson's card. 1-2, he's going to double. Double to left field for Brooks Robinson. He's already doubled in the first. He's doubled again. He's two for three with two doubles. Check for a balk on Herbal. And there is none. Here's Davey Johnson. 1-2. That's the ballpark card. We're going to Candlestick. 5-6. And again, that's another rare play once again. This time it's at first. I'm sorry, runner at second base. So let's move the chart to runner at second. And check the rare play. We're total up the dice. We get a 6. Runner at second. Two down. Runner at second, two away, and a six. Two outs. We're coming in here to the two outs. Ground ball up the middle. Batter bounces a single pass to pitcher. Shortstop and second base converge on the ball. The better rated fielder of the two dives to try to keep the ball in the infield. Well, that would be Hal Lanier. Roll one die against his, it should say, in our game, it's we're depending basically on range. So we're looking at the range. If it's higher, he gets the glove. If it's, the die is higher, or the die is higher, it's going to get by him. If it's low, if it's five or less, he will get the glove on the ball, knock it down, 
batter is safe at first and runner holds at third. If if we he doesn't make the range play, then it's gonna get through four base hits. So basically, his range is a five. Look at how linear his range is a five. And that's a four. So that means he knocks it down, keeps it in the infield, and Brooks Robinson has to stop at third base, which is huge. Because that would have been a RBI single otherwise. So that keeps run that makes it runners on the corners with two outs and Davy Johnson with an attempt of one, but a minus one from Herbal, so no attempt, but we will roll for a balk. And there is no balk chance, so it's up to Echebaron now, who is two for two in the game, a single and a home run. Normally, if you have a right-hander in there, you'd bring in Elrod Hendricks, but Echebaron is hot. You're not going to take him out. Four ones, a blank. We go to Echebaron. One six, he's going to ground a short, so that time he doesn't do it. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Orioles still hold a slim seven to six lead. And it was six nothing in the first. I didn't think that was going to be the case. But that's why you played the whole nine innings. All right, so Jack Hyatt, who came in to catch and bat ninth, is going to get his first attempt against Dave Leonard. Five four. And I've got to write Herbal in down here for the Giants. All right, 5-4 for Leonard is a blank. We go to Hyatt. 2-2. Two, two. And I guess a right-hander. That's a ground ball to first. So one away. Would have been a walk against a lefty. Automatic walk. All right, Tito Fuentes, the batter. Leonard, 5-6. It's a possible error on a ground ball. Fuentes, 1-6. Grounder to short. Air on Belanger is an 8, but that's a 14, so that's way above the 8, which means Belanger makes the play. Two down for Ron Hunt. 5-3. Three. That's a ballpark card. 3-3, three, three, and that's a star 3, which is a ground ball to second, and the inning's over. So now it looks like some pitching stability has come along with the bullpen for each team. Go to the fifth, it is seven to six. Herbal. Let's see, he has faced five batters. He can face eight. So he should be okay for this inning. We shall see. We got a pinch hitter for Leonard coming up, though. Unless they want to keep Leonard in the game. Leonard has faced six batters. He can face ten. We'll wait and see. We'll see what Belanger does. Herbal, 3-3, three, three, is hit by pitch. Two, but that's a minus five, so no hit by pitch. Belanger, 4-1. He's got a single. So they could leave Herbal in, the, or Leonard in there to uh, bunt, perhaps. He does have his own hitting card. He is a two bunter, which would make him a one bunter. Not very good. But they like to keep him in there to pitch, I think, because he's pitching pretty well. So, let's see how they want to play this. Let's see how they want to do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. They're going to go ahead and bunt with Leonard. First we'll roll for Herbal. 2-4 is a blank, so that means Leonard does get the bunt. He's only a 1. That's a 10. That could be iffy. A, whoops. A 1 and a 10 for his bunting. And that's going to be a foul. So it's fouled off. He gets to try again. That's a 6. A 1 and a 6 is a good bunt. And a 4 is the first baseman. So it's actually going to be Leonard. And he is going to... Do a good sacrifice. And it goes to McCovey, who will just tag him out unassisted. Belanger moves up second base with one out. And that's going to send us to Don Buford. Nothing on the strat. 1-6. He's not tired, so there is no single chance. Buford, 6-6. Six, six. There's a single chance right there. A single to right. 
This could score Belanger. With one out, Belanger runs at a four. Bonds in right is a zero, so it's a one to four there. Single to right, you gain one, so that makes him a five. So one to five, he will make it. And he does. So RBI single for Buford. Orioles now lead it eight to six. And now Herbal is tired, or will be tired, because he has faced eight batters, and he can face at eight batters. Blair is his ninth batter. I think they might want to try to get him through the inning, though, so we'll see. Nothing on the strategy roll. Here's Blair. Herbal, five, six, strikeout chance. Struck him out. Two down for Frank Robinson. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Herbal to Robinson. 2-6, strikeout chance is too high. We go to Robinson's card. 3-2, he flies to center, and that's going to end the inning, and that's going to be it for Herbal. So, one run for the Orioles. They take an 8-6 lead now. Herbal's day is done. He will be moseying on and moving on, and Giants will move on to a new pitcher. Leonard is back out. He can face 10 batters, and so far he has faced six, so he's still good to go. Bobby Bonds leads it off. Five, six, possible error on a ground ball. Six, four, ground ball to third. Brooks Robinson's error rating is, a, is only a five. That's a nine, so no error, and Brooks makes the play. One down for Willie McCovey. 5-3, and that's the ballpark card going to Candlestick. If he gets the home run chance, it's automatic. 3-4, though, is going to be a star two, which is a fly to right. So two down, and that brings up Willie Mays. 1-4, that's a walk chance. 7 it will be a walk, so two out walk to Willie Mays. And here is Jimmy Ray Hart. Roll for a possible pickoff. Nothing happening. 4-2. Double question mark against a right-hander. 1-4 to four is automatic out, but that's a 14. So move on to Hart. 1-1. One, one, ground ball to short, and that's going to end the inning. So nothing doing there. Now we go to the top of the six. It is 8-6, and we get a new pitcher for the Giants and also get another double switch. Pitcher was batting in the seventh position, but now the pitcher is going to bump up to the sixth position in Jimmy Ray Hart's old position. And Jimmy Ray Hart will leave the game. And new left fielder for the Giants will be Ken Henderson, switch hitting left fielder. And Ken Henderson will bat in this position here in the number seventh position on the double double switch. Score sheet is a mess. And the new pitcher for the Giants, let's see who they're going to bring in. Luke Powell is set to lead off, but he's the only lefty. Everybody else is a righty. So they're going to bring in Rich Robertson, I think, or are they going to bring in somebody else? Let's see. Who do they want to bring in? Uh, they may go to a lefty anyway. They're going to go to Ray Sadecki. Left-hander Ray Sadecki. So Sadecki is on. He can face eight batters. And he will bat in the number six position. Will Ray Sadecki. All right. He's going to face Powell Robinson. Powell Robinson and Johnson. 6-5 blank. We go to Boog Powell. 6-3, ground ball to first. One away. Brings up Brooks Robinson. 1-3 is a walk plus, and Brooks will draw a walk. Reaching base three times already. He has no attempt, but we do roll for pickoff chance for Sadecki. And he doesn't get it. Here's Johnson. 3-2, and that's a strikeout chance, but 18 is way too high. 4-3, he's going to single pass short. 
And Brooks Robinson, to get to third base, you'd have to have a base running rating of five, so he doesn't have that. So it's first and second with one out. And Andy Echebarren back in there facing the lefty again. Could be dangerous for the Giants. Nothing on the strat roll. 6-1, possible error on a throw. 2-6, star three is a ground ball to first. And, of course, you're looking at a 3-6-3 double play. McCovey's an 8. That's a 3. It'll be a throwing error on McCovey. Now, the guy receiving the throw is Lanier. His range is a 5. Let's see if he can make sure it's not a 2-base error. It is not. So it's just going to be a 1-base error that throws him off the bag or pulls him off the bag. So count it as an E3 on McCovey. And it loads the bases. So potentially a double play chance has now loaded the bases. Not what the Giants needed. Bases loaded now, one out for Belanger. Infield's gonna have to play in. They can't trust the double play chance. We'll check a pickoff, nothing happening. Sadecki to Belanger, 2-2. Two, two. He's not tired, so there's no single. Belanger, 2-1, that's a single. He singles to center. And the Orioles looking for more runs. There's a single there. To score, Brooks Robinson, Dave Johnson, Davey Johnson, runs at a three, score on a single to center. You add two, makes him a five. So one to five, he will score. And he does. So it's a two-run single. Two-run single for Belanger. And the Orioles now lead it 10 to six. Etchebarren. Doubtful he can make third base. I just don't see that happening. Let's look at his running. See what happened here. Uh, let's see. Where my cards go. There, that's where they went. Etchebarren's a two to get from first to third on a single to center. You lose one, that makes it a one. Hmm, well, they'll try it. No, actually, we use the same roll as the four, so he's gonna he's just gonna stop at second base. Keep it simple. He will stop at second base. But Lander, a big hit. And now Leonard is the scheduled batter. Do they want to continue with Leonard? They're going to pinch hit for Leonard. I think they got an, Earl Weaver got enough out of him that they, they're happy. So they will pinch hit with Merv Rettman, the right-hander. Merv Rettman will pinch hit for Leonard. Merv Rettman. And let's see. Runners at first and second with only one out. No pickoff. Sadecki to Leonard. Or to Rettman, rather. 2-1 is a strikeout plus, so we struck him out. He's a 9. The plus gives him a 19, so that fits. And Rettman strikes out as a pinch hitter for out number 2. And that will send us to Don Buford. Nothing happening there. Sadecki to Buford. 3-2. Strikeout chance. Got him to end the inning. That's probably going to do it for Sadecki. We'll see. Orioles pick up two more runs. At least one of those was unearned, you would think. But now it is 10 to 6, and the Orioles don't really care about earned runs. They just care about the runs. So Ken Henderson, let's see. He's the leadoff man. It'll be Henderson Lanier. Deets was removed a long time ago. I'm not sure why he was there. Henderson, Lanier, and then we need Hyatt, the catcher. So those are the three hitters that are coming up for the Giants. And we get a new pitcher for the Orioles. And coming in to pitch the sixth inning for the Orioles will be Mr. Dick Hall. 
So Dick Hall is back out. He's pitched a lot in the series. He's going to pitch again. He gave up the big home run to Willie McCovey in the previous game. So he's looking for redemption here against, Ken, against the Giants. 4-1, possible error on a ground ball. 6-2, that is a ground ball to first, possible error. Book Powell is a 4, that's an 8, so Book Powell makes the play and will shuffle off to Hall, covering for out number 1. Brings up Hal Lanier. 5-5, five, five, strikeout chance, 7 is too high for that. No, it's not. I'm looking at the left-hander. He's a right-hander. That is going to be a strikeout. Almost misread that. Here's Hyatt. Ball to Hyatt. 5-4. That's an automatic out. That's a star line. And it will be a fly to left to end the inning. So 1-2-3 inning turned in by Dick Hall. And he might go a second inning. In fact, I'm sure he will. Sadeki, we'll see about Sadeki. We shall see about Sadeki. Let's see. He can face eight batters. He has faced seven. So you're really risking it to leave him out there. So Sadeki is going to come, going to be leaving the game. Another giant pitcher will be coming on. And it will be Don McMahon. So McMahon's coming on. Be facing Blair, Robinson, and Powell, heart of the order. 10 to 6. Favor the Orioles here in the seventh. 5-3 is a range play. Go to Blair. 2-3. That's a liner to third, but the range of Fuentes is a three. He needs a three or less to get to this. And he can't. It's going to get by him for a double. It will. It's a double down the left field line. Paul Blair sneaks it past Fuentes. It rolls in the corner for a double. And that'll bring up Frank Robinson. 4-5. That is a blank against a righty. Frank Robinson, 1-1. One, one. He lines it to third. This time it is caught by Fuentes. They could double the runner at second. To do that, you need a two. It's the only chance you get to double him off is to roll a two. And they don't do it, so... Blair gets back. One out. Here's Boog Powell. 2-2. Two, two, strikeout chance. Nine. Got him. Two down. For Brooks Robinson, who's had a great day. Two doubles and a walk. Did have a strikeout, but two doubles and a walk. Otherwise. McMahon. Five ones. A strikeout chance. And he got him. So nice outing for McMahon. He's just going to go the one inning. They just want him to go one inning. He did his job, kept it 10 to 6. Now, Dick Hall back out will be facing top of the order Fuentes, Hunt, and Bonds. Fuentes, Hunt, and Bonds against Hall. Seventh inning stretch time. I probably should have taken one as long as this game is going with all these runs, but I didn't. 2 5 for Hall's a strikeout chance. 14 is too high. Fuentes, 6 3. Star 2 is a fly to left. One down. Brings up Ron Hunt. Hunt 3-4 on Hall is a range play. Go to Hunt's card. 3-5, and that's a fly to right, so the range of Frank Robinson. He is a, he is a 2 on his range. Can't get it. Is it going to be a double? It will. It's a double by Ron Hunt. One out double for Hunt. And now Pete Rickard is loosening in the bullpen for the Orioles, the left-hander, along with Eddie Watt, lefty and a righty double barrel action. Here's Bonds. Hall, 5-2 is a blank. We go to Bonds. 2-3, it's a single pass short. Don't know if Hunt can score. S6, you need a 5. He does not. He will hold at third. So now... With the lefty Willie McCovey up coming up, Dick Hall will exit. And they will bring in the, because he gave up the home run to McCovey last time, so they're not going to risk temp fate again. They're bringing in Pete Rickard. Not even a thought about it. Pete Rickard is going to come on to face McCovey. They're not going to let McCovey face the right hander Hall again. 
So two on, one out. Roll for a pickoff, nothing happening. Rickard to McCovey. 6-2, that's a potential walk. So he walks McCovey to load the bases. And now all of a sudden the tying run is at the plate in Willie Mays. Nothing on the pickoff chance. Rickard to Mays, 1-3 is a range play at the ballpark. Infield is halfway, so they would lose one on the range if it gets to that. Go to Candlestick, 4-5. Is a star four, which is a ground ball to third. So Brooks Robinson drops from a five to a four. Range of four now. But he still makes the play. Is it going to be a double play? He's a three, plus the one is a four. They're halfway, makes it a five. The pivot is a plus one, makes it a six. It's automatic. Five, four, three. So very nice to have the good, the great defense that the Orioles have, and that stopped any runs from scoring. Took care of business. Actually, yeah, because the walk loaded the bases, so it was a force play. It was a, I was thinking of first, to second, and third, but I forgot about the walk. All right, so now the pitcher spot will lead off the next inning. So you wonder about McMahon. McMahon faced four batters. He might come back out. In fact, he will. He's going to come back out. They're going to try to get him to coax two innings out of him if they can. He will be tired after the Johnson at bat. 5-3 is a range play. We go to Johnson. Whoops, the 20 didn't go through. Let's just roll that again. 1-3, star 5, and that is a ground ball to third. Range of Fuentes is a 3. And he can't get it. Will it be a double? It will not. Lead off single for Davey Johnson. Lead off single for Davey Johnson. And now there's no strategy rolls with the score being what it is. So McMahon will stay in the game to face Echebarren. But he is tired. 6-5 is a walk chance. 15 walked him. So he walks Echebarren. Runners at first and second now with nobody out for Belanger. 4-3. That's a blank. That's a blank. Oops, Sua Dice. Let's try again. 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four for Belanger. As the dog is barking, so I'm throwing me off my game here. 2-4 for Belanger. I thought it was a ring. You know what? I, I'm going to pause the video. Okay, sorry about that. I totally lost my place when the dog started barking. Everything. I'm just going to re-roll to hold it bad. I don't remember what the original roll it may have been a range play, but I don't remember. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-roll everything from the get-go. So McMahon, 5-3. Well, it's back to a range play again. To Belanger, 5-4. Fly to left. The left fielder, new left fielder, is... Uh, where'd he go? Did I have a, Henderson, yeah. He's a 2. So it's a range of 2 for Henderson to make this catch. He can't do it. Is it going to be a double? Nope. It's another single to left. Will the run score? We'll find out. Dave Johnson runs at a three to score on single to left. You add one, makes him a four. Ken Henderson's a minus two, makes him a two. One to two, he scores. He does not. He's got a hold. Bases are loaded. Bases are loaded. And now McMahon's going to have to come out of the game, I think. As we're down to the pitcher spot, Pete Rickard. But I think Rickard is going to come out and be pinch hit for. And the new pinch hitter is going to be Chico Simone. Oops, wrong spot. Chico Simone because the Giants are bringing in a lefty reliever by the name of Ron Bryant. So Ron Bryant is on. Sixth pitcher used by the Giants. Ron Bryant will come on and face Chico Simone. Bases loaded, nobody out. Infield is 
Well, you know what? They got a double play rating of six here on Chico Simone. So they could play normal depth and try to get two outs. Although you're down 10 to six, you kind of want to cut the runs off, but it may be impractical to cut every run off because you give up a, a huge inning that takes you completely out of the game. So we'll see. They're going to go ahead and play. They're going to play for the traditional double play, I think. Oh, you know what? They're going to play in. They're going to have, not going to have any choice. They're going to play in. Ron Bryant, 3-5. Strikeout chance, but 20 is too much. Simone bats. 1-2, and it doesn't worry about a double play. It's a single to center for Chico Simone. Pinch hit single. Johnson will score. Everybody else just moves up one base. Echebarren's not going to try anything. They're going station to station as well on that at bat. That run is charged to McMahon. So now Buford is up. Base is loaded. Still nobody out. It's 11-6 Orioles. Infield still in. 4-1's a strikeout chance, but 11 again is too much. Buford will swing it. 4-4, four, four, and he's going to single pass first. S3. And to score from second on an S3, you only need a, you need a 4 is what you need. You need a 4 base running rating. Runner at second is Belanger, and he runs at a four, so he will score. It's a two-run single. And to get from first to third on an S3, you only need a, you only need a two. And the pinch hitter, Simone, is a four, so he will make it to third base easily. And things are going from bad to worse for the Giants now. Strategy rolls are... Completely off now. It, three runs are in the innings. It is now 13 to 6. Giant, uh, Bryant, possible wild pitch, and he, he uncorks a wild pitch. Obviously, he got flustered, and he uncorks a wild pitch to make it 14 to 6. The extra point is good for the Orioles. They take a 14 to 6 lead. 6 1, and that's a straight up home run chance to Paul Blair. He's a 15. That's a 2. It is gone. It is now 16 to 6 Orioles as they have just totally blasted this thing wide open. 16 to 6 more um, Let's see, how many runs they get this inning? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 6 more runs. It is 16 to 6. And you wonder if Bryant can stay in there. He hasn't gotten anybody out yet. They're going to leave him in there. 6 2, take one for the team, as they say. Robinson, 3-6, fly to center. That is out number one, actually. Orioles looking to bat around again. They already did it in the first. They're looking to do it here in the eighth. Book Powell, 6-5, possible air on a ground ball. 5-5, five, five, and that's a pop to first. That's two down. Ninth man to bat in the inning is Brooks Robinson. Brooks Robinson. Bryant to Robinson, 6-2, blank. We go to Robinson's card. 6-1, he's going to line it to third to end the inning. So they sent nine to the plate, and six of them score. It is now 14-6, favor the Orioles. 14-6, so we'll get a new pitcher for the Orioles in this 14-6 blowout. And it will be Tom Phoebus. Bryant is done. It'll be Phoebus, the pinch hitter, or the new pitcher, rather. Phoebus will be the new pitcher. And for the Giants, it'll be Ken Henderson to lead it off. I'm sorry, it'll be a pinch hitter. Henderson bats second. All these double switches is getting confusing. We need a pinch hitter for Bryant, because Bryant was hitting in the sixth position. So for the Giants, let's see if they got on the bench. They don't have any, do they have any left? Yeah, they got Dave Marshall, a lefty. Actually, they're going to go with Bob Berta. Give him a chance. So Bob Berta is going to pinch hit for the Giants in this pitcher's spot. So Berta, the pinch hit. Bob Berta. It's Phoebus. The score sheet is just miraculously awful at this point. 4-6 is a blank. We go to Berta. 2-5 is a ground ball to first, one down. That brings up Ken Henderson. Came in on that double switch. 
Feba, 6-6 six, six is a walk chance. 19 is too much. Go to Henderson. 4-5, and that's a ground ball to third. Brooks Robinson is there, two down. Brings up Hal Lanier. 4-6, blank. We go to Lanier. 4-2, that's a ground ball to the pitcher. And it's an easy 1-2-3 inning for Phoebus. And now we go to the top of the ninth. New pitcher for the Giants. They've already used six pitchers. The only pitcher they have left is Frank Lindsay or Rich Robinson, so they're going to go with Robertson. Lindsay's pitched a lot, so they're going to go with Robertson. He is pitcher number seven for the Giants. When you're down 16-6, to six, you bring out your scrubs for sure. So 16-6, to six, it'll be Dave Johnson, Echebarren, and Belanger. Do up for the Orioles. If anybody gets on, a pinch hitter most likely because they want to get Eddie Watt in the game. So Phoebus was for the Orioles. So Eddie Watt will be pitcher number six for the Orioles. So a lot of pitchers in this game. Robertson to Johnson. Four six is a walk chance, and why not? Lead off walk to Davey Johnson. He's reached base almost every time. He's gotten four singles and a walk. Four singles and a walk for Davey Johnson. Strategy rolls are off. 5-3 for Robertson's a strikeout chance, and he got him. One down. That takes us to Belanger. 5-1 to blank. 4-5 pops to first, two down. And now the pitcher spot is up, so Phoebus will leave, and we'll get a new pinch hitter for the Orioles, and they will bring out a guy who rarely gets to pinch hit, and that's Clay Dalrymple. Might as well give him a chance. No sense, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point who you use because the score's so bad, so you might as well give Dalrymple a chance to appear in the series. Robertson, 4-5 is a blank. We go to Dalrymple. 1-2, he grounds to first, and the inning is over. So 16-6, to six, we go to the bottom of the ninth. 16-6, to six, and for the Orioles, it will be Eddie Watt. They're one of their closers. I don't think he's pitched in the series yet, if I'm not mistaken, so might as well get him in there. He's going to be facing Hyatt. Fuentes and Hunt, but we may get a pinch hitter for Hyatt, and I think we will. We're going to get Dave Marshall to pinch hit for Hyatt. So Dave Marshall is going to pinch hit for Hyatt. Marshall will be the pinch hitter for Hyatt. Here in the ninth against Eddie Watt. 5-1. Strikeout plus for a righty, but for a lefty, it's a blank. Marshall 6-5. He flies to right. One down. Here's Tito Fuentes. 2-1. Home run question mark against the switch hitter batting left. That's only a 1-4, to four, so that fails. Fuentes will swing. 3-1 is a ground ball to the back to the pitcher, Watt. Two down, and this fiasco is almost over. Ron Hunt, 6-5, is a range play at Candlestick. 3-4, and that's a star 2, which is a ground ball to third. Brooks Robinson is a 5. And he puts it away to end the ball game. So a wild one, 16 to 6. Orioles win it emphatically. They send it back to Baltimore for a game six. It'll be Jim Palmer against Gaylord Perry in game six from Memorial Stadium. And then if the Orioles can somehow win that, then you're looking at a game seven where it's Cuellar and Marischal. So Despite the blowout, I hope you enjoyed that presentation anyway of Inside Pitch. And until next time, I will see you all down the road.